What is up, people? The internet, it is me, Real American Politics, back in with a new video. And I think it is time that we talk about the new bellwethers and the death of the old ones. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the United States has, well, you see, a lot of freaking counties, to say the least. There's too many counties. And for years, there was only a couple counties in presidential elections that seemingly predicted every freaking election since like 1960. However, in 2020, a lot of 90% of them were wrong in predicting the winner. Now, you can make the argument it was just the F word, but I think it's more, you know, nuanced than that because it's not just the F word these counties went Republican, but, you know, a state went blue. It's a little bit more advanced than that. So, I'm here to talk about it. But before we start today's video, we must start with the most important thing. Smashing like that like button down below, subscribing, sharing with your friends, hitting that little bell, and yes. Let's try to hit 350 likes on this video. That'd be greatly appreciated. And uh, yes, let's keep up the momentum as of late. I mean, the momentum as of late for this channel is absurd. We're gaining hundreds of hundreds upon hundreds of new subs. New followers. It's phenomenal. So let's keep up this momentum. So, bellwethers have always been a fascinating case for me. And they're changing. <laughs> for the first time in probably ever, we're getting a new swath of bellwether counties. Now, before we st talk about the newer ones, we must first talk about what was really the older, you know, traditional bellwether counties. Because they've changed significantly. Well, in 2020, let's look at the original bellwethers. First is definitely Vigo County. That's the one county that everybody thinks of when they think of bellwether to the extreme. This one county has essentially predicted every election outside of 2020 since 1960. It has always been a phenomenal county in looking at how the orange man or the Republicans or anybody did. In fact, I think it, yeah, it shifted only like 0.3 points Republican. So it's a county that Trump won by 15. And we all know, uh, yeah. Anyways, so it was wrong, I mean, quote unquote wrong, about who won the election. As for the second bellwether, it's usually seen as Valencia County, New Mexico. Now, what do you notice about these two counties? What's one thing you notice? If you don't know, these two counties have a distinct, unique demographics. Very rural and very working class. Now, for years, these were usually the swing voters, rural, working-class voters. Valencia County, a bit more Hispanic, more minority working-class, while Vigo County is more white working-class voters. So that's why they've always been seen as, you know, the bellwethers, because back then, working-class voters have tr used to be the main swing vote, not what's happening now. Instead, we're having a bit of a shift. And oddly enough, it's still working class, you know, bellwether. But it's not rural working class bellwether. It's instead more suburban and urban working class bellwether counties. Those are the counties that matter now, not rural working class counties. Reason for that, they're all trending Republican. I don't think there's a single county that's like 90% white and working class that's trending Democrat. They're all trending heavy Republican. So that's why these counties are starting to not have that same punch as they used to do. Because back then, for years, you always had the working class voters in the rural parts of the country always swing. And these counties always seemingly got the hardest swing as they predicted each election. But now we have a unique circumstance where it's not rural, working class. It's suburban. And, again, I have to make a whole video on the suburbs because I'm getting sick of some people saying, Oh, well, you see, the suburbs are this, this, and this. No. Suburbs are not all just the Philly suburbs that I'm about to talk about today. So, yeah. You get the point. The, there's a significant change in what the type of bellwether counties are. And we're going to start with the top five or seven-ish bellwether counties of the future. And number five is in Michigan. Of all states, it is in Michigan. I do believe Kent or Muskegon County could be argued as the next bellwether. 
Now, you look at the shifts in the Grand Rapids area, and you can make an argument, uh, something may, um, mm -mm, may have uh, occurred here. Not saying it did, uh, maybe saying it did. But you could also make an argument that it's Macomb County. These were the three counties that you could make an argument for. Kent, Muskegon, and Macomb counties. Now, the reason I say that is simple. Macomb County shifted nearly identical with the rest of the state. It got three and a half points more Democrat. The state got like three and a half points more Democrat. The reason I say Kent County is Trump lost it. And he lost the state. He won it in 2016. And he won it in 2016. The reason I say Muskegon is, of course, its demographics. It's a very weird county, in fact. It's, it's a weird mix of suburban, rural, but very working class, in fact. So it is a weird mix. But I do believe you can make an argument for one of these three. Macomb County is not your traditional suburb. It's a pure blue-collar, working-class suburb of Detroit. And it is slightly trending Republican. Though this time around, it shifted exactly with Michigan. So it's one of those three counties. But they're all suburban-ish and very, fairly working-class. Kent County... It's just more so whoever wins a county kind of wins a state, it seems like now. Not necessarily that working class, but Muskegon and Macomb County is definitely more working class. So, make the argument, pick your poison, whatever you want to say. These two counties, they are probably the bellwethers of the future. Now, number four surprisingly comes in the state of Florida. And it's going to be Pinellas County. Now, this is a weird one. Because even in 2020, this was always the bellwether for Florida. Whoever won this county, seemingly 90% of the time, won this state. It's a unique county. As in, it's somewhat in the Tampa metro, the metro area. Same time it's more exurban. Same time it's more suburban. Same time it's working class. It's a weird county. But it has a good mix of everything in this county. Working class, a bit more suburban. A bit more rural, some urban parts. And while Biden lost the state, he still won this county. And nationwide, he did technically win. Now, Pinellas County is, again, a weird county as in... It's suburban, urban, and rural like one county. <laughs> that's essentially what it is. And that's why I think it is one of those counties they could say... Yeah, I think that it is a bellwether. I mean, Biden won it. And he won the presidential election. I mean, it's swung nearly identical with the nation. So that's why I'm saying that Pinellas County could be argued as the fourth bellwether. Again, it's not going to be as extreme as these other, other three counties. But Pinellas County, I would say, is the number four newish bellwether county. It's always been there, but I think it's more prominent now because the suburban shift is more important. Now, number three is a bit of an interesting one. And that is Erie County. Now, Erie County is not what you would call really suburban. In fact, it's a fairly work, white working class exurban county. More, than, more so than, you know, suburb. It is a very strange county, to say the least. Now, mm, there may have been some stuff that happened here. I'm not going to say, you know, it was purposefully done or not done or anything like that. But... It shifted nearly identical with the rest of the state, around a two and a half point shift Democrat. The state shifted like what? Two and a half points Democrat? Nearly identical. Like well, check right here. Yeah. About two and a half points. So it's nearly an identical shift with Pennsylvania. And just like 2016, Erie County went Biden, or Biden in 2020, Trump 2016. Whoever won this county won the presidential election and also won Pennsylvania. So Erie County. It seems more stronger than ever as a bellwether. I mean, it shifted nearly identical with the rest of the state and almost the rest of the nation perfectly. So it's one of those counties that is really starting to look like the true next bellwether. But there is two more other counties that I would say probably fit that mold better. And I have to go with Texas. There's one in Texas in particular. Tarrant County. Now... We can make the argument all day about the Blexus, the Texas Blue crap. I don't believe it. There's a lot of data coming out that showing that it's questionable if they Democrats can even crack 5% here. 
or lose within 5%. But it's unlikely. And Tarrant County, just like many other of these other counties, Biden won this county by 0.2%. He won the presidential election by, you know, a couple hundred, by like, what, 70 electoral votes? It's another one of those counties that, once again, went to Trump in 2016, Biden flipped it, he won the election. Now, Tarrant County is a weird county, as in it's basically a suburb of Dallas. But it's not like Colin or Denton. It's more working class. Now, again, there is still a heavy college-educated vote in Fort Worth, or Tarrant County. But... There's a lot of working class voters as well. And just because you're educated does not necessarily mean you're not a working class voter. It just means you're less likely to have a blue collar type job. So that's why I'm saying that Tarrant County is one of those unique counties that have a very suburban, but at the same time, fairly working class. And once again, it predicted whoever won the presidential election also won this county. It was spot on. So what could be number one? And again... Number two through number five, you could possibly interchange with them. But I have number one set that this is the next Bellwether. This last Bellwether County is the one that is going to predict all elections from here on out, in my opinion. And that's in Arizona. Take a guess where. I, I wonder which county, which county in particular is the future Bellwether. Oh, Maricopa County. This is by far. The number one new bellwether of all bellwethers. The reason for this is simple. Did it shift exactly as a nation did? No. However, you essentially need to win Maricopa County or lose it by a very slim margin to even win Arizona. And when you do that, it's very easy to win the election then. And once again, 2016 Trump won it, 2020 Biden won it. He won the presidential election. But Maricopa County is weird. As I would say there's three thirds to it. The one third is very suburban. You know, the more middle class to upper middle class voters. You got the urban areas. More minority voters, more working class minority voters, more educated minority voters. Essentially more minority voters. But then a third of it's rural. And you know how they're shifting. Significantly Republican. So there's a lot of variables in this county. There's a lot of interchangeable demographics just slammed into this one county. And it is starting to look like it is the number one future bellwether. I mean, it's starting to look like it's shifting nearly identical with the nation. You know, Republicans, you know, lose a pop of the rope by, you know, four. They probably lose Maricopa by like two. That is, is what it's starting to look like. And the future presidential elections really run through Maricopa. They have a lot of different interchangeable demographics that really are starting to influence elections, especially the more suburban, middle class, or even working class voters. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit the little bell, and yes, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next a video. Godspeed to all of you.